What better way to sit out gridlock than in this 1990 Rolls Royce? Well, there may be one other way. Leave it to Ted Koppel to find it. Not perhaps the first thing that leaps to mind when you think of Washington's problems, but rush hour in Washington, D.C.? Among the worst in the nation. Commuting in and out of the nation's capital consumes roughly 150 hours a year. The pace of Washington's rush hour traffic so lethargic that even this venerable 1909 Model T Ford will have to slow down to keep up. Well, I mean, obviously, you... this is the car that changed American history. Prior to the automobile, most people had never been more than 30 miles from their home. Jay Leno's profession is comedian. His passion is automobiles. He has collected more than 150 of the finest cars in the world. He knows their bloodlines. What makes them run? This car was the great savior of the American horse. Back before the automobile, New York had 60 tons of manure dumped on its street every single day. And in the summertime, horses would drop dead from exhaustion, and guys would cut the reins and leave the dead carcass and just walk away. CBS News fact-checkers, intimately familiar with the subject of horse manure, point out that the actual quantity deposited in New York was closer to 1,000 tons a day. And all of a sudden, this thing comes along, a little puff of blue smoke in your face. It didn't seem quite so bad. How are you? Sure, my friend. You too. And if you're peeling out, how fast can we go? The top speed was about 44 miles an hour, 50 miles an hour. Don't forget, the speed limit in 1912 was about 18. Oh, they had a speed limit. Oh, yeah, they had speed limits, yeah. I didn't know that. Do you know how they developed the national speed limits? I have no idea. When they had the highway system, they would take ordinary citizens out in cars and they put a towel over the speedometer. And then they go, tell me when it feels uncomfortable. And about 60 people go, oh, that seems about right. And that, and that was sort of the, how it was developed. No kidding. Actually, the fact checkers are twitching a little on that one too, but it's a good story. I've had a lot of funny experiences at the White House. The first time I did the White House correspondence in it was with Reagan and I was standing backstage and this general comes backstage. He's got all the medals. He goes, hey, hey, you the comedian? I said, yeah, yes, sir. Let me tell you, that is my commander in chief. You understand that? You don't make fun of him. You don't denigrate him. And he's poking me in the chest, you know? <laughs> he goes, that is, a, that is a leader of the free world. He gives this big speech. And then he leaves all pissed off. I'm like, oh, man. Then two minutes later, George Schultz comes in. And he's got a drink in his hand. He goes, Leno, come here. Nail Ronnie's ass to the wall. <laughs> Just nail his ass to the wall. I said, well, that general told me, ah, screw him. He works for me. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. How you doing? <laughs> now, we're, we're going to be coming up to the Trump Hotel on your right. You know, he had Trump steaks. That went bankrupt. He had Trump casino. That went bankrupt. And he had Trump vodka that went bankrupt. And I say, if you can't make money selling Americans gambling, liquor, and meat, how bad a businessman are you, you know? Really. That's kind of a classic old Leno joke. That is a classic old yeah. Leno joke, yeah. yeah. That's, that's kind of harmless. There's no. Well, see, the difference is, in the old days, I never questioned anybody's motive. I just questioned their judgment. And that was the fun part, because basically, you were thinking of the person as a patriotic and a good American and doing things for the right reasons, even though the way you went about it was wrong or the way you handled it was wrong. I, I must admit, I'd never seen it this partisan. In the current political climate, everything's a little rougher, including late night comedy. Now, if people don't like your politics, they don't like your comedy or your music or your acting or whatever it is you do for a living. 
that's that's the part I find unbelievable. What do, what do you make of it? Well, Jack Kennedy had a had a favorite line, and he said, "The hottest places in hell are reserved for those who preserve their neutrality in times of crisis." That's great. And that always struck me as a yeah. perfect definition of yeah. what I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I tried to do when we did the Tonight Show. You. Every week, I well, you and your Democratic friends, well, you and your Republican buddies. And I would think, oh, everybody's mad equally here. Well, this is fantastic. What kind of car is it? Model T. Model T, what year? 1912. Cool. Only two payments left. Actually, it was 1909, remember? New York, 1,000 tons of horse manure. Now, that was congestion. Well, this is the traffic you were talking about. This you finally, you got your wish. We finally got traffic.